Um, so this one's going to be a little raw. I have held back from talking about Congo as a Congolese because I was exhausted. That is just the real fact that most Congolese on this app will, will, will agree that we have been screaming and shouting about this for so long that I just stopped because I, I, I just stopped. We have known about this for so long and, and I just, I was like, what's the point? It doesn't matter what we say or do. The governments aren't listening, obviously, and the people are not listening um, because it's Africans. It's black lives. What are black lives, really, right? We're expendable, really. There is a totem pole, right? Anything outside of whiteness is, is, an, is an undesirable. So black bodies, brown bodies, indigenous bodies, Asian bodies, they're all undesirables where, where, where whiteness is, is, is concerned, right? But there is a hierarchy, and right at the bottom, it's black, it's African, because w w it, it's this idea that this is what we were here for. We're here to suffer. We're just here to suffer. And so the world world isn't shocked, right? Because they've been so desensitized to the fact, well, that's just the role of Africa. That whole continent is just there for good old suffering and exploitation. It's, it's, it's where we take our shit. And, and then we take all the riches, the abounding, immense riches of which the West and the rest of the world would not be what it is if it wasn't for Africa and Congo in many ways, right? Congo is, if not the most, one of the most richest countries on this planet in terms of the resources in her soil, in terms of what she has to offer humanity. But instead of honoring her and stewarding her and her people, it has been nothing but exploitation since Leopold. Nothing but exploitation. Congo has not been given a break. It's Congo has not been allowed to, to be free, to stand on her own. Because she must be exploited. And, and, and the debts, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to the world. And so it has been so healing to see people talk about it on this app. But I've been triggered. And, and, and ever, anyone who is a part of a people group or a minority that is disenfranchised, displaced, silence, feels the same. Because why did it take so long? The Palestinians are asking the same. Why has it taken so long? Why has it taken so long for the world to care? Why has it taken so long for people to stand with us and say, this is not okay? And so I felt that. I felt, why has it taken so long? And whilst I am happy because awareness is the beginning, it is not the end, it is the beginning. I was triggered. And not just because of what is going on now, but because of the history of Congo. Triggered that when I ask people, very, if I ask 10 people, maybe one person will know what happened in, to Congo during Leopold's rule. We learn about all these other atrocities in the world, as we must. But for whatever reason, Congo's pain has always been at the bottom of the totem pole. So very peop few people know that during K King Leopold's rule, t up to 20 million Congolese, one country, 20 million Congolese were annihilated, wiped off the face of this planet because of the riches of Congo and Leopold was there to mine rubber and diamonds and different minerals, right? At the time, 20 million Congolese gone, not all of Africa, one country, 20 million. And who learns that? Who was taught that in their history books? Who was taught that? We're not, nobody knows of this and, it, and, and, and we're meant to be okay. You, you, I cannot tell you how how heartbreaking it is to grow up learning about all these other atrocities that have happened and to have my heart bleed for all of these people only to know that those people and the people that are in power, these Western governments, will never teach the world what happened in Congo because who the fuck cares? Because it's black bodies. And because we need to keep exploiting Congo, we can't let people see Congolese people as people because then we won't be able to make what we make. The world won't be able to be what it is. I won't be able to hold this phone to tell you how I feel. But why should entertainment or technology, why should the means to communicate freedom, 
and 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 communicate equality and communicate um, and a condemnation of Western colonization and and greed. Why should that come at the cost of innocent Congolese lives? Why? Why is it okay for America and their corporations in the UK and Israel to fund rebel armies to keep this conflict going? Why is it okay for them to create mines that do not have machinery? If you see the images of these mines, thousands upon thousands of men, women, and children, there is no machine in sight. These mines are not created to adhere to any Western standard because America would never dare, Australia would never dare to have a mine where there is no machinery, where there are no safety checks, where you send people down wearing nothing but pants and they work for 12 hour days children are working for 12 hour days 14 hour days they will never hold a phone never know what that is what a tv is what is that they are born into it there are, this conflict has been going on decades there are kids that have been born into it like the children in palestine you are birthed into conflict because of the color of your skin and because the resources of your soil that god gave to you your sovereign soil means more to the West than the lives of the kids and the men, women, and children suffering to... Colton Orr is so hazardous. And these people are going into these mines with nothing but pants. And it's not just the mining. When I found out about this, I was 21 and I was writing for a small publication at the time and I wrote article after article. I told all my friends, I started fundraising things. I wrote to churches and I was like, please, we've got to do something. And all I ever got was basically nothing. So I was exhausted. Congolese people were exhausted because it didn't make sense to us that first you ignore the 20 million that died in Leopold rule like you you ignore that under colonization and then now you're ignoring the fact that in, in in that this has been going on and the numbers then was six million it has tripled by now I I can guarantee you it was six million and I was 21 that's that was like that's you know I'm 37 now do the math that was a long time ago a long time ago and the numbers were six million then and not just that but the, the, it was the first conflict that the UN dubbed whether the weapon of choice was was grape that the women in Congo, in, especially in Goma, uh, be, uh, the, the frequency and the brutality with which they're being graped is there's never been seen. So these rebel soldiers, UN soldiers, are coming in and raping. Some women are, are graped uh, 10 times a day, 20 times a day. Men, um, young, old, it's happening. And they're developing this condition called vaginal fistula. And they're left leaking and bleeding. And they're ostracized from their families because the smell is horrendous and the leak does not stop and it is a simple surgery it's a day surgery and there's only a few um heal africa i'll, I'll do another post putting up different uh, organizations that you that you can um uh, you can go and help are uh, the one of the only organizations in congo who actually um go find these women stitch them up so that they can go home and be mothers go home and be wives and sisters and daughters um and the U.S. and all these Western governments are funding this, and 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 they're and, and they're keeping it silent because the world can't know. The world can't know because because where would we be without our precious technology, without our precious phones and TVs? And it's so much. Our planes use it, medical, all the world. It, it needs it. It needs it, right? The world that we've created needs it, and it needs it more than honoring the lives of the people that are actually mining it. And so I was triggered triggered because the same tactics that we used back then are being used now when Leopold ruled he would go in there with his armies and they would cut the nipples off breastfeeding mothers so that they could watch their babies die and then they would beat the men tie them up and they would grape the wives in front of the men so that they could break the spirits of the men and then if the if, and then if you didn't um get the enough rubber and enough minerals in your daily quota they would cut the hands off of babies your babies and they would make you wear them around your neck and then you then then Europe propaganda i mean news got back to belgium and europe that shit was going down because missionaries were like shit is going down there and it's ugly and so they created propaganda around it and created these um got the chocolatier the chop chocolatiers of europe to create chocolate hands and they would sell them to children so children and white little white children all across europe were eating the the symbolic severed hands of congolese babies 
you dehumanize them, you make them chocolate, you make them edible, you make them consumption. And that is all that Congo has been ever since colonial rule. And I don't know, I don't know if it's going to ever end. So thank you to everyone that is sharing. Open up your heart, let it break, be a part of the solution. I'm going to be sharing what I can about it, but it's raw. I'm a piano, piano, the big vibe, the girls, them know, steady, steady.